Hi, I'm Siva and um, I'm a currently I'm a student at University of Texas at Arlington doing my master's in mechanical engineering. Uh, my undergraduate background is mechanical engineering as well. But before I came here, I worked in India about eight years and then I chose to switch my careers uh, by doing masters here. I am from uh, Vijayawada, which is about uh, four hours from Hyderabad uh, towards the south. And um, um, I I worked in uh, different companies throughout the eight years. I've switched about uh, three companies and uh, I worked for Bosch in Bangalore. And then uh, I also worked for um, a company named Danieli. Uh, which is which was based in Kolkata and now uh, which is based in uh, Chennai. Uh, it's an Italian company which does um, um, which built uh, which build steel plants uh, for all their customers. Um, so while I was working there, I was a hydraulic specialist, and um, my job is to um, go from site to site, uh, like. To the client locations and then uh, set up the equipment uh, which i'm supposed to do and uh, uh, start it up and um, you know hand over to the customer for production and do a bit of production assistance as well but um i was um, this 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 uh, involved a lot of travel um about let's say 100 percent except the leave you get so uh, you would never know uh, where in which side you will be and um, to which side you will go uh, so there are no advanced uh, advanced notifications that you will be traveling so this was this was too much uh, for me and i did this for too long after i get after i got married um i decided that i would um i mean with a push of um, with a push from my wife anyway um, we decided that we should um, get the masters done and change the career path so that we could settle down at a place and uh, have a nice family. Um, I did uh, pretty much on my own, but uh, I used this online service, online, uh, whatever it's called, Magush. So I subscribed for uh, a month of theirs um, or six months of theirs. I do not remember exactly, but it cost me about $100 and um yes i i prepared a lot i actually had taken the test twice uh the first time i did take the test without any preparation and i only scored about 294 and then i thought that which wouldn't be really enough so uh then i subscribed for megush um i worked for about 20 days before i took the second test um but i worked hard i i gave about um six hours a day for preparation and uh, um i was working at that time but i uh, the stress was uh, the stress was a little bit less the workload wasn't high so i got i got good time in uh, preparing it even in my work location so um i mostly concentrated on verbal because that's what i was lacking and i was able to put up the scores of 157 on math and uh, 155 on vocabulary but i couldn't improve my writing um in the sense um uh, i don't even remember what is the other section we have i i scored only about three on in that mm. but um i also took ielts i did not prefer TOEFL for some reason i don't know why um probably the dates weren't um available for um TOEFL so ielts was pretty much available so i scored about 7.5 in that um it did not take very much preparation for ielts it was easy but for gre i put a lot of time in there i memorized about thousand words i guess and then yeah i could i did better i guess so uh after my gre was out and my toefl was out i was satisfied with the scores and then i uh, i mean even before that i started looking up uh for the for the universities which i could apply i did not uh, i did not do very well in my undergraduate i had only about 65 percent i had i had some backlogs um i regret it though but um so i thought um my academic um percentage wouldn't really help so i had to concentrate on gre and ielts to show that um i could i can do better um and i uh, along with my experience of 
uh, I tried for different universities. I never approached any consultancy. I searched the universities on my own. It was pretty late by then. Um, by the time I had to apply, uh, it was pretty late. I, I started applying probably on a, mm, probably on yeah October or November, I guess. So uh, many uh, universities were done with their deadlines for that. Um, so I could only find two or three universities which I could apply. So one was UT Arlington. For some reason, I had always this uh, thing about uh, getting approved for uh, UT Arlington for some reason. But I also applied for another university in California. Um, it was it was Long Beach, or uh, I honestly don't remember the other one, but it was uh, University of um, Cal California State University, CSULB, yeah. It is uh, California State University, Long Beach, but I got a rejection from CSULB. The only university I got approval is UT Arlington. Um, so I, I went ahead with uh, UT Arlington. I, I had just one admit. So um, I'll say how uh, this happened. Mm. So I received uh, my UT Arlington um, admit by uh, in the first week of March. And um, after that, I was still waiting for the Long Beach. Uh, they did not show up till May. Um, so I went ahead for the visa interview using just the UT Arlington admit. And my visa interview was in first week of May. Um, um, I remember the interview very well. I was there and um, there were a lot of students with me and um, um, everybody, I guess at least 10 to 15 people were rejected in front of me. And um, when I went to the counter, she was an, yeah, of course she was an American woman. Um, she asked all my financial documents straight away. So once I gave my financial documents, she started verifying my financial funds. And then I had a bank loan and then I had another 20 lakhs um, as deposit in my in my in my father's bank account, actually as fixed deposits. And then um, she started asking me, where did we get this money? And then I, I said I said that, that um my dad has saved lot, uh, a bit of money he's uh, supporting me and then i also worked for about eight years i also saved some money which i am which I, which i am also putting it in for my masters and then she asked me where i worked i said all those details she asked she did not ask me why ut arlington or uh, why what she just asked me um, why I am doing masters after uh, after working for eight years um, in India? Uh, then I answered her the same thing as I said. I wanted to change my career path. I am I am stuck in erection and commissioning, but I want to be a design engineer. And um, nobody gives a shot um, if you're already a side guy. You will stay in the side. Nobody gives a shot uh, to. Uh, I could stay in the site for life. So then I said that the same thing that I need, uh, I need a new uh, opportunity and I could do only this with uh, masters acquiring new skills or whatever it is to convince her to get my visa approved. But she did not approve my visa right away. She put my visa in administrative hold and said that it would take 10 days. Um, um, 10 days uh, because she needed additional financial documents. And then um, she gave me a case number. I went home. Then I prepared those documents. I, I, I put my, I put the case number in the subject and um, emailed the documents uh, to the given email ID. And then it took another week. Uh, no, before that they called the bank. Um, they called the bank to verify that the my, my loan was genuine. So the bank manager had to verify it and then they approved my visa. So it took about 10 to 12 days, or let's say two weeks before I got my passport. So I got my passport with the visa stamped by um, May 5th, May 20th, I guess. Then I was ready, I was ready to go. No, um, I did not uh, find a GTA, but I found some on-campus jobs uh, i found a job on bookstore uh, which i worked about you know you're only allowed to work 20 hours a week so um, 
Um, so I used to work about four hours while managing the courses. But after that, I found a job um, in um, in another department in the university. But I did not find any GTA. But I volunteered. Um, I volunteered as an uh, research assistant for a professor, but for about three months, um, but it wasn't paid. So it didn't help. Um, it didn't help financially, but it definitely has helped um, to get an insight of uh, what she was uh, doing with her research. Uh, I am currently doing an intern in my in in the in the company I left when I was in India. So the, so the company I left before I came here was Danieli, as I said. Um, I, I found an intern um, in the Danieli Corporation in the US, and um, I am currently working uh, for them. I just started my intern in fall. It was a different kind of story, actually. I, I, I could have finished my master's last May, like my other friends finished. But the problem was, um, um, you know, sometimes what it happens here is you have to enroll for courses. And when you want to enroll for courses, there are only limited seats for the courses in which you cannot you, you may not find sometimes. And um, the, in, in UT Arlington in mechanical engineering, there are some core courses which you have to finish, including two basic uh, math courses and then one from your area of emphasis and uh, the rest are um, electives. So it's a 30 credit are um, um, program and uh, I couldn't uh, find a seat. I mean, I couldn't finish my math course because I couldn't find um, um, I couldn't find an um, uh, opening in it. Uh, so I couldn't enroll for it. So so if I have to stay as a full time student, my university requires me to take three courses again just to be a full time student in fall, which I cannot afford. So and then I started seriously considering the option of internship because um, in these uh, these rules vary by college. It's not universal. I mean, it's not it's not from the U.S. government or uh, DHS or anything. So my university does allow um, if you are if you find an internship, you can just go and work and you don't need to enroll in any course provided they provided that the internship is full time and is not part time. So if you are if you found if you find a full time internship, then you don't need to enroll for course. That is the reason I that is, that was my main motivation. And also, yes, of course, the intern will help me to find a full time job. Um, I'm already on the way of that because um, once I started here, they already asked me how long can I work and all. So probably I'll be continuing uh, with them until unless I find a better job. Oh, I have a lot of advices uh, for juniors. Yes. Um, so see, the, the current situation in the US is very is getting tougher every day. So there is a lot of competition and there are less jobs. So if you are a computer student, probably you would find jobs faster using consultancies, using full times, whatever your options are. But there are also what you have to remember is if you you they are also narrowing down on the consultancies now. So there are so many people who are working for the consultancies get got their H1 picked. And after that, the H1 never gets approved. I mean, the H1B, it never gets approved because you're working for consultancies. But if you are a full time employee directly working for even a small company, and even if your wage level is one, it doesn't matter if your H1 is picked, you have you have pretty good chances of um, getting it. See, I'm talking about the H1B because everyone's intention, as of I know, is that after they come here, they want to land in a job and eventually they want to settle here. That's most of the cases. But if you are someone who just wants to get your masters here, you want to go back to India, then it is perfectly fine. You can come here, you can do your masters, you can do your thesis. You, you can do pretty good, but if you get caught up with, you know, arranging your own financials, like working an official part time somewhere, making money and all, then you you will get stuck in the loop and you would you will not make good grades and you will not be able to achieve what you want. So so if you are coming here, you should be focused on 
what you want to do. You just have to decide if you are just the other regular person who wants to come to the US, do just the degree for namesake and then find a job and then just uh, go and settle here. Or you can really concentrate on your master's, get get a very good thesis. Maybe probably you can also continue on your PhD and that will land you in an excellent job. And then your wait times or your path to citizenship or green cards, whatever you want is considerably less. People have to understand this. The current wait times are about 35 to 40 years. I would never get, I'm, I'm, I'm nowhere close even to a H1, but I'm just saying I would never even get closer to getting a green card. So you have to find alternate options in that. But if you, if you do a PhD or if you have, if you, if you do a master's, if you do a PhD, if you got your papers published and then definitely there are good jobs with great pace in the US uh, for everyone. Um, and the path to settle down here is very, very less than uh, what you do um, what, then when compared to the people who just do the masters and uh, find a job and go in that path. So you just have to decide between those two. Yeah, you work hard for two years, get your masters done, maybe work hard for another three years in PhD and in three years you are done. So it just takes about 10 years in the US, you want to settle, get your green card with a PhD. But if you if you choose the other path, it's about 40 years, which you which the people who came here in 2008, I know a few people who came here in 2008 and they still are waiting for their green cards. It's 10 years. They're still waiting for their green cards. The current dates, the green cards are processing are in 2003 and 2003 year was was there for the last four years so they're taking four years to process one year applicants so in that case they these guys who came in 2008 has to wait for another 16 years before they just get in line so that's already 25 years of your life gone in the us uh just you know trying to trying to maintain your job doing good giving your best you know, holding on to the job, actually, you just have to hold on onto your job, even if your green card application is approved. And then if you are H you are renewing your H1 every year, it doesn't, um, you know, and if you lose your job because because of some unfortunate or unseen circum circumstances, then you're gone. You have to go back or find another job. But it, the case is different with the PhDs. The PhDs is always um, greater val greater value and they have lot they have greater demand than the regular people so and the advice is just decide what you want to do but don't get stuck in the loop of just completing the masters and finding some job that will not that will not really help I, so